Thank you so much, Alex. Wonderful to meet you all. I'm so, so lucky and excited to get to speak with you about one of my favorite subjects, Course Hero. Um, Alex spoke about his inspiration. And just to kick us off, I wanted to share with you about my own inspiration. Let me show you. This is from my house right now, or in the recent past. Um, I was talking to my little daughters, they're five and seven now, about what I'm doing this afternoon. And they said, what are you doing? You're, you're on TV, something big is happening. And I said, I need to talk about student perspectives on Course Hero. And they said, but we're students of Course Hero. We love Course Hero. Um, so I realized I should include them in my conversation with you today. They are a big part of my inspiration. The same way that Alex says he still dreams about how he could have helped his students more in his teaching days. I think a lot about how can we create a more equitable, accessible, easy to use, student-centered education system for my little people and others like them to grow up with. Um, and it really, it's a, it's a big part of how, why I love working for Course Hero, because I can see a through line between what I'm doing every day and how it might affect the future, including for my little bunnies that I show you here. So let me just give you a little bit more of a guided tour uh, into what is Course Hero? How do we see ourselves? What, what actually are we behind the scenes? So we see ourselves as a study platform. We like to think that we are providing study guides, practice problems, video tutorials, 24 seven homework help with live tutors, um, and even now textbook solutions and explanations, which I'll tell you a lot more about later on in this talk. Um, and why do we provide these things? It's because we seriously do want to be a learning platform where students can get, the, get to grips with the tough information that you educators are teaching them. We see ourselves as a partner to educators. And this is part of why I feel so lucky to get to speak with you today about how we see the role of Course Hero in your own classroom practices and even outside the classroom. Um, I'm super, super excited also to tell you that we have some students who pay to use Course Hero, of course, but Course Hero can actually be free to everyone. If you share your own study resources with Course Hero, you can get access to the library without paying anything at all. So this is part of how I see us contributing to a more equitable educational system, like I was mentioning at the beginning. And now for my very favorite topic, the why behind what we do, what we do. Why do we at Course Hero come to work every day? Alex started explaining this to you already and I just wanna give you my take on this super important topic. So this is our honest to God vision statement for the company. This, this is like on a poster next to my desk. It says we envision a world where every student graduates confident and prepared. And I, from what I've been hearing in our Ed Summit for the first day and a half, I feel like we are extremely aligned with our educators because as, as far as I can tell from listening and speaking with so many of you, this is the same world that you are participating in. You are trying to help your students graduate confident and prepared and help them succeed. And then what is our mission? A company mission statement is another important way to get a sense of who we are. Our mission, is to become the optimal learning destination for every course. And this is very, very important for me to emphasize because this is our long-term most ambitious vision for what we could accomplish. We really would love to be a place where every student in every course can get help on their toughest problems and they can come to your class more prepared because of what they have learned on the platform. And then this is a very, very important aspect of my day to day. My job at Course Hero as the design leader is to make sure that we are designing our services for our students and around our students' needs. So this slide just gives you some really behind the scenes information about how we see our students' needs. Um, so one of the ways that we learn about what students need is literally like Alex is going to do this afternoon with our student panel, we talk to them. We go to their dorm room sometimes, this is all pre-COVID of course, now we would have a Zoom call with them and we would ask, tell us what your study session is like, what problems are you encountering? And then we listen very carefully to what they tell us and even what they can't express, but we learn through observing their behavior and so forth. 
And we see something very important, which is that sometimes, this is a quote from a real student, sometimes it takes me longer to find what I need than to actually learn it. So we know there are moments where students feel like they are just about to figure something out, but they can't quite get past that moment of feeling stuck. And the process of getting yourself unstuck is such an important part of learning and the learning process. We would love to be a partner to students to help them through that struggle of being stuck into the getting unstuck of true learning. Another super important need that we hear from our students is around preparation for exams and tests and quizzes and other assessments. So we hear students saying things like, I'm so nervous for my exams that I just need to prepare by practicing problems over and over. And the practice job to be done, as we call it, the practice need is so important to us because I don't know how many of you heard um, the wonderful Dr. Barbara Oakley speaking this morning. Practice is really scientifically proven to be one of the ways that people actually metabolize new information and create knowledge for the, themselves. So we see practice as very fundamental to our role as a learning platform. And then finally, our final student need that we think about all day long is students want to feel like they can answer the, the questions that they come across. They want to understand how things work. Lots of students use YouTube and other resources to find out the story behind the problem. How does this problem work? What concepts are being taught through this problem? And we refer to that as our understand how job to be done. So I've explained to you that we really care passionately about serving our students needs. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about how do we actually do that? How do we connect what we do every day through our products and services to what our students really need? One super, super important thing that I love about Course Hero is I've worked in a lot of companies and seen a lot of companies where we have company values and the values are no more than poster wear. They're up on the poster, but you don't live them every day. At Course Hero, I'm very proud to tell you that I do not feel like our values are anything less than our actual principles to live by. I see us talking about these things. I see us encouraging each other to use them. And I really, really love that part of Course Heroes culture. So I wanted to tell you about one of our values, maybe my favorite one. I like all five of these, but maybe my favorite one is customer focus. And this is extremely connected to what I've been explaining about our need to really understand our students and our educators so that we can build products and services that help them. So let me tell you more about how we embody customer focus in our team. This is the topic that I would basically summarize as my life's work. If somebody told me I had to say, what is your life's work? I would say my life's work is to be a human centered designer. I want to design systems, services, and products that are built around the people who need them, not built for their own sake or because I think it's a great idea, but because they really do serve the human being at the center of the system. And so the way we do this in everyday life is we have a wonderful, wonderful human-centered design team and research team at our company. I just quickly want to introduce you to my team members because I love them all so much. So this is Rachel, Angela, Shireen, and Christine. And all of these people work with me every day to understand better what are our customers going through, how can we help them more, where is our product letting them down right now? How can we address that? So this team is extremely empowering for the entire company because we don't have to guess what students or educators might need. We can literally figure out a way to learn that through some method that we would call user-centered research. And one of the most important practices of a human-centered research or human-centered design team is the simple practice of empathy. And I wanted to make this very explicit for our educators today at the Ed Summit, because this is so core to the pr practice of being an educator. I hear this from our educators all the time, that they want to empathize with students, they want to meet the students where they are. This is the same thing we want to do. We want to understand our students and meet them where they are, not expect something impossible from them, but meet them where they are. And so in our human-centered design and research practices, we cultivate empathy. That's one of our most important skills. 
And we do it by really connecting with our students. So the idea that the world is full of people who are really struggling with these things, we go and try to find out what, what are they struggling with? How could we help them? And so this is a, a true story from, um, I believe this guy was a bio major. We were talking to him a few years back about how do you study? What's it like for you? And he said, if I get stuck on something, it's not like I just want to find the answer. He said, the answer alone is a bailout. I want the full explanation of how it works so I can know that I know it myself. So this is like a core need that I told you about already. Students really want to feel like they're understanding what's going on inside a problem. They don't just want to get stuck on the problem and get unstuck with an easy answer. They want to understand deeply what's going on in this problem. How can I solve a similar problem like this next time? Another story I super love, I, I think that this person was at UC Berkeley and she was talking to us about what she's looking for when she's studying. And she explained, I don't just want the answer because that feels like I'm cheating. <laughs> I want the step-by-step -step help because then I know I'm actually learning it. And I love these two quotes together. I, I talk about them often because I feel like they sum up this really nuanced distinction between cheating, getting an easy answer, taking a shortcut, and really feeling like, you know what, I almost know it. I'm almost there and I just need a little bit more help to get over the finish line or understand it more deeply. And that's where we see Course Hero playing. We really want Course Hero to feel like a partner, a TA, a coach to the student, not somebody who's just giving them easy answers and, you know, over and out. And we've learned something really interesting through our research with students, which is that our user needs, our jobs to be done that we see the students having, they are not separate. They are not worlds apart. They actually interact with one another and overlap. And I'm super happy to present to you this slide because I feel like this really does encapsulate my personal beliefs about our jobs to be done or our student needs. There is some kind of magical overlap between getting unstuck, like just knowing what you need to know to get through this problem, understanding deeply how the problem works, and then practicing that problem or similar problems to really cement the understanding in your mind. And so to go deep into this a little bit more, I want to talk about that moment of being stuck. And I spoke to you about empathy. I want us all to take a moment to actually empathize with the student who is feeling stuck. I love this picture because this is what stuck feels like to me. I've been writing all night. My notes are full. My page of notes is completely full of my like feverish writing, but I can't go any further. I actually put my pencil down because I am stuck. I've been working on this for so long and yet I've hit some kind of brick wall. I feel like I can't continue. And we would like to be like a, a, a little glimmer of hope to students at that moment. So we try to do things like this. We try to say, okay, student, you are stuck. We will help you make the most of your study time, not stay stuck on this one problem, but get through this so that you can learn it deeply and move on to the next thing you're trying to learn. So we talk about things like making every study hour count. That's what we really want to do for our students. So we offer them study resources. We offer them 24 seven homework help. And as I mentioned, we are now offering some textbooks and solutions for them as well. So let me tell you a little bit more about how these things work. So we like to think that our students can get unstuck and understand how through lots of different resources that they find on Course Hero. I talked to you about the 40 million documents, actually more than 40 million now, that we share from our crowdsource resources. Then we've also been making forays into making our own content. So we have video tutorials for certain subjects. This was a um, subject of a lot of research last year, 2019. And we've even created some of our own educational materials in more like a document form. So something that feels like a study guide for, for a course. We've also created some very specific study guides for literature. So famous literature titles that you might be teaching your students in your classes, we would make it um, available to them that they can watch videos about how each chapter works, they can understand the structure of the book. Um, I'm the daughter of a librarian, so I have a um, secret love for this part of our product. 
And then this is something that we're investing in a lot lately. We have a 24 seven homework help service where a student who needs more help on something can actually come to our website, submit a question or a request for more information about a certain topic and a real live human being somewhere in the world will sit down with their question and compose a thoughtful reply. And we call this our 24 seven homework help service or our Q and A service. And what's kind of awesome about this is that you ask your question, help me understand the main difference between plant and animal cells. And then we aim for this to happen quite quickly. This one happened to have happened in three minutes. That's quicker than we usually are, just being frank. But this person, Stephen Kay, my tutor, sent me a long explanation of the difference between plant and animal cells. And I'm able to say, oh, yay, I think that was a great answer. I would love to give this a high rating. And so I've spoken to you a lot about how Course Hero helps students get unstuck and understand how. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about this sort of magical nexus that I see amongst all of our jobs to be done, including practice. And let me just take a small detour here and credit Dr. Barbara Oakley this morning, who talked about how practice activates the hidden learning system in your brain. I hope you are all there. If you were not, if you were not there, this will maybe feel like a, a um, a little side note, what Barbara Oakley described is, these are the neurons in your brain. And the way that your neurons connect to each other is actually how your brain learns information, retains information. Um, so she introduced the idea that these neurons are less scary if you think of them as space aliens. So that, that's a credit to Barbara Oakley's space aliens. And then she talked about these connections that you have to form in your brain to actually learn something. And she talked about the importance of practice in this respect. Unless you practice what you learn and unless you go through it again and again, these connections don't really form. And so she went as far as showing like a um, series of the days of the week and she said, practice it on Monday, then go to sleep and help that knowledge settle in your brain. Practice it on Tuesday, <laughs> then go to sleep. Let that knowledge settle in your brain. Practice it on Wednesday, take a break on Thursday and practice it again on Friday. And this is how your brain likes to actually retain information, lay down the foundational layers and let them dry in between before building your wall even higher. So I, I am a big believer in this form of learning. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about one of our products that goes kind of deep into the space of practice unstuck and understand how. Um, so for this part, I want to introduce the textbook solutions and explanations project that I told you about a few minutes ago. Um, I'm super, super proud to tell you that I had the personal pleasure of working on this. So I know a lot about how we partnered with publishers to make these books available, how we've dug deep into how to provide educational content to help students with their textbooks, um, with their textbook problems. So let me walk you through this. So we are adding new textbooks all the time. This, when we first launched, I think we launched with five or seven textbooks. We're now in the multiple hundreds of textbooks. And this is something that I'm super, super happy about. And I'll explain to you how this works. When you are sitting down, if you're the student, and you're sitting down with your textbook in front of you, biology and the, the unity and diversity of life, chapter 35, self quiz at the end of the chapter, you're on number four. And let's say you're stuck on number four. You don't know where to start, but you think you might have an inkling. What we thought while we were designing this project is, let's not just tell them what the answer is. Maybe they're not that stuck. Maybe they can do their best and actually get it right. So instead of saying, hey, for this, this um, exercise, the answer is A, what if we ask them to tell us what the answer is? And so what we realize is we can do an actual interactive learning experience as part of a textbook solutions and explanation service. That makes a lot of sense and that might actually really work for students. Um, so instead of just saying what the answer is, we actually ask them to tell us what the answer is. If they're stuck, they can ask for a hint. They can watch a video about the concept. So these are things that we're designing to try to help them answer the question themselves through hints or like we heard for Understand How before YouTube videos or other videos that we might have created to really help them understand what's going on behind the scenes for this type of problem. And then maybe they feel like they have enough understanding to actually guess that or, or not even guess, they feel confident that the answer might be B. So you could say, let's try that answer. And then unfortunately, they did not get this right. 
So instead of saying, well, it's not B, but it's A, we could just explain why B is wrong. And this was another deep insight that we had that we don't have to reveal everything. They're still in the middle of their learning process. They're still practicing using their knowledge. So let's encourage them to practice a little more. So we don't give them the right answer right away. We ask them to think about why this one was wrong. Maybe a different one is right. And then let's say they do say A. We can say, hooray, A is right. You're on the right track. That is great. And something else we learned through user research is don't even say A is right and why it's right. Tell me why the other ones are wrong, because I want to learn everything you know, Course Hero, about this kind of question. Help me understand it really deeply, even by explaining to me why the other choices in a multiple choice question are not correct. And let me tell you one other thing that I super love about this product. For this product, we were actually able to have educators verify the responses and explanations to these questions. So this is a real person, Rebecca Weiler, who went through this question and verified this is correct, A is correct, these explanations of why it's right and why these others are wrong are all correct. And if students want to learn more about her because they want to trust this answer and trust who verified it, they can even go to Rebecca's Course Hero profile page and see who she is, all the resources that she has uploaded to Course Hero. And we see this as a place where the student product and the educator product of Course Hero actually tie together really nicely. And then finally, let me show you just one more thing. Another thing about textbook solutions that we really love and that we feel connects it to how un get unstuck understand how and practice connect together is we've invested quite a bit into step-by-step -step explanations. So let's say we're in that same book, different exercise, and somebody wants to solve this problem but needs a hint on how to begin. Instead of showing them the whole answer, we can just show, say, show me step one. I only want to see step one. And then once you've shown me step one, maybe I have a clue about how to do step two. Maybe I won't even click this one, but maybe I still need a little more help. So we can show you step two, and this happens to be a two-step problem, so you are done. The final answer is this. You can compare how you were approaching the problem step-by-step step with how Coursera recommends solving the problem. And again, we're able to point to the educator who verified this response and explanation, and if the student wants to get to know that person more, they can. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm going to skip ahead a couple of slides to my thank you slide. I really want to thank you for your attention and for listening to this walkthrough of how Course Hero serves our students. And now, without further ado, because we are a human-centered design company, which means we are a student-centered design company, I wanted to say, let's talk to our students. So I'm going to hand over to Alex Witkowski to talk with you with our fabulous students. Thanks, Alex. Thanks so much, Genevieve. As we talk about being human-centered, I realized that my name on Zoom was Zoom SA22 the whole time, so not helpful for all of you. But uh, Tilda and Preston, you feel free to, uh, to get your uh, cameras back up. I cannot begin to explain to you how excited I am for this. Um, I am going to do as little talking as possible because I have two amazing people I'm very excited to introduce you to. Uh, and I... Uh, I'm just going to let them introduce themselves because they will do a better job than I possibly could. So uh, if you could, uh, so Talitha, why don't you start us off and then we'll go to Preston. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us where you study, what you study, why you study it, and then I'd love just like a fun, interesting fact about you. All right. Um, so my name is Talitha and I'm a rising sophomore at UC Davis. Um, I'm majoring in biological sciences and I'm hoping to add a minor of human rights. Um, and I'm on the pre-med track. Um, so I'm hoping to tie my love for science and medicine with human rights in the future. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I played the violin for 10 years <laughs> and I stopped in high school. So, yeah. <laughs> well, my name is Preston. I'm a recent graduate from Arizona State University. I like to leave the start in the biomed program there. Uh, I was pre-med rather. I was looking at going in, into something like that. But I think like many students, I kind of have this like identity, like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. And so I switched to marketing because those are so related, you know, <laughs> um, I switched to marketing. I have a, a certificate in data analytics I picked up as well. So I recently, you know, finished school. I have a, a job I just recently secured at a telehealth company, which has been fun for me to learn about. And a uh, fun fact about me is I speak Hungarian, which I get to use never because no one speaks Hungarian. <laughs> Preston, I didn't even know that about you. Yeah. Nice. That surprise is coming up. Wonderful. I would love for, so maybe each of you could, um, 
and and this is a broad question. You can interpret this however you want, but I'd love for you to um, describe yourself a little bit as a student. Like, what are your involvements on campus? What well, what's your philosophy? So maybe we'll start with Preston and uh, and just leave. Sure. Yeah. So I was an off-campus student for a lot of my. Um, I lived off campus, even though I was taking classes on campus. And so I wasn't able to get as involved with campus life as I would have liked to. Um, it's kind of interesting. I was going to Arizona State University, but I was also part of the, their honors college there. And so there's all these opportunities I didn't really get to take a part of. And so a lot of my classes, because of, you know, I was working full time, more or less full time throughout school, was trying to balance, you know, like, can I take this class online or on campus or do I have to take it online? So my experience with Arizona State University was kind of just trying to figure things out semester by semester, playing it by ear. Sometimes it'd be all on campus. Sometimes I'd be off campus. Sometimes I'd be picking up a second part-time job. Sometimes I couldn't do that because of classes, you know. And so, I don't know, I, I, you know, looking back at it, it was just kind of like a semester by semester experience for me, just figuring out what my schedule is looking like, what my classes are going to look like, and what it's gonna, you know, what what the vibe of the semester is gonna be? Is it gonna be science or is it gonna be business? You know, like <laughs> it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So um, for me, my, I mean, it's only my um, going to be my second year, and like part of my first year got caught off because of COVID. So um, in the beginning, I was uh, super involved. I immediately um, joined Greek Life, the Armenian Students Club. Um, I worked on a four-year plan with my pre-med advisor. So I was super busy um, and I didn't start getting really, really busy until um, this past quarter when um, like I joined the, the National Board of the Armenian Students Association, um, got involved with like other projects outside of school, but also tried to balance um, my pre-med track with um, I guess like exploring things that make me who I am outside of school, if that makes sense. So I've been super busy, um, try not to get overwhelmed, but um, I like to just learn as I go and fully immerse myself. Um, I don't want to end college thinking, oh, I should have done this or I should have, you know, um, been a part of this. So that's just how I roll right now. Um, and with like all the classes I've been taking, um, I've come to realize that I'm a visual learner, so um, I like to be in class. So being like going virtual is kind of tough, but um, you know we're getting by. So yeah. I was I was actually going to ask. Uh, so uh, Tifa, I'd love to hear what was the transition like for you when you found out that you had to you had to switch online. Can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like? Yeah, honestly, in the beginning when you know, schools across the country were going virtual. Um, we were at Davis like, oh, that won't happen to us. Like, we're so far away from what's going on on the East Coast. Like, we're not gonna get affected. So when everyone had to go back home, we had to leave the dorms early and everything. Um, it was pretty sad because I was looking forward to having another quarter with my roommates. And uh, we were all looking forward to spring quarter, um, just kind of putting ourselves out there more and like getting to know more people. So, um, it was pretty tough like in that aspect and also with learning because um, as a biology major, some of my classes have labs. So it was pretty hard um, transitioning to like an online lab and having to watch videos instead of being there in person. Um, and also another big thing that kind of um, impacted me was um, not being able to go to the library to study or a coffee shop like that's how I feel most productive like going somewhere and just sitting down with my work um, or going to the tutoring session so yeah that's like that was the hardest struggle just getting adjusted in that aspect yeah a lot of last minute change and Preston was your senior year interrupted by uh by COVID Kind of, yeah. My, my senior year was mostly focusing on my um, my honors thesis, and so that would have been off campus anyways, and so I didn't really have a huge effect. My, my, my big change was I had my thesis defense virtually as opposed to in person, you know, so I, I did not feel the effects of COVID like a lot of my peers and constituents did. That was something I did not have to go through, so a lot of props to Talitha for doing that, I think. I can't even imagine trying to do a lab online. I can't even... I, Think about doing that <laughs> yeah it sucked <laughs> the props you for your thesis <laughs> uh, and Preston you you had taken some online classes previously right like it, I you, it wasn't totally okay cool um awesome so I would love to so I'd love to hear a little bit about um 
how Course Hero fit into your to your journey. Like, uh, tell me a little bit about kind of I guess how you discovered it and and how you used it and and what your reaction was and and yeah. Well, I guess I'll start with this one. So yeah, for me. I had done a couple years of school. Um, I, again, I was looking at doing science first. And so I had gotten my associate's degree in science and then taking a little bit of a break from school. I lived in Hungary for a while, which is why I speak Hungarian. So coming back from that, I was like jumping right back into these upper division science classes. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like it's been, two, it's been a couple years. Trying to figure it out was really challenging for me. And I was going through like a lot of stuff in my personal life. And so um, you know, I just found constantly I had questions. I wasn't like, you know, I had just been doing formulas and that was like chemistry in particular, I was taking some upper division chemistry classes and I'm just really struggling. And I remember this one day I was just like, I need help with this problem, like this equation. I know if I could just see how we work through one of these kind of equation issues like balancing, then I know I can do other ones, but I'm stuck right now in this moment. And so I literally just copied and pasted the, the question in a Google and Coursera popped up. One of their questions, you know, one of the features that Course Hero has is students can, I think, submit their homework assignments. And that's kind of my first taste of Course Hero was like being able to see this little snapshot and like get through this kind of problem and be able to solve the rest of my, my problems because I saw, you know, I could figure out how to work through one. And then throughout the rest of school, it was just kind of this thing I kept in my pocket. You know, I was like, okay, Course Hero exists. Like, you know, I've used it. But I wasn't really willing to, willing to pull the trigger of buying it because, you know, I'm a college student, you know, you know I don't have a lot of money. So I find myself in this semester where I have this online class that I found to be very poorly structured. It's a business process class. And so there's a lot, you know, pretty complicated things I'm doing. And I'm just like, I don't know how to do this. And the, there's no resources. I can't get tutoring help. The professor's lectures aren't great. And so I was just like, I need help now to pass this class. And I'm like, do you know what? Why not? I'm going to subscribe. You know, I, I maybe have other help, help in my other classes. And I was so regretful that I did not do that sooner because um, subscribing to Course Here, I suddenly had access to these tutors that were there all 24 seven. I had access to just help. And so there's multiple occasions where I'd be stuck or I'd be preparing for a test and not getting something. And it was online. So I wasn't on campus and not around tutors or professors. And I'm just like, I need to like talk to someone. And I go to Course Hero and like within like 30 minutes, I had like a answer to these questions and homework assignments would be looming like due at 1030. And because I'm busy or maybe because I procrastinated, you know, who knows, you know, I'm like still trying to finish it and same thing. And so that's something that like, I realized it's like, it was such a great tool to help me to not just like get through these classes, but to like understand them better, you know, and to like be able to go into a test situation, feeling like better prepared for it. And so that's kind of like maybe a little bit longer than maybe I needed to say, but just kind of like, you know, dipping in very, very casually at first of course zero to subscribing and seeing their whole features, I guess like if I had to change one thing, you know, being able to do the yearly subscription from day one would have made school a lot easier, especially because it could have been used online and in-person classes interchangeably. You know, it's 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 24 seven help from my own home. So it, it would have been awesome, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Talitha, before you jump in, I'd love to ask one follow up, Preston. So, so you're talking about this, this online class that you were struggling with. And, yeah. and you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I talk to professors every day and they're, they're, I heard from so many who had this abrupt change to an online yeah. class and, and they said, you know, I, I don't know how to structure an online class. I kept thinking, thank God I'm not in the classroom because I would have no idea how to structure an online class. So I'm curious, like, just from your perspective, could you say a few words about like, what's a type of structure for an online class or what kind of resources are, are like, uh, what kind of online experience would be helpful for you, like as a student? Sure. Um, I think that a lot of things in college, like learning how to like just not have your hand held when you do th go through classes. But I think that sometimes it's really hard to, to, to recognize how much you can hold people's hands when you're in ca on campus. You know, mm -hmm. you have resources all around you, professor office hours. So comparing these cl online courses that I felt were really good versus the ones that I struggled with, there was just like, I felt like every single, like the syllabus, it just like walked you through it. Every, you know, courses and the, 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 the lecture material and the homework were very, very much in sync. And the textbook kind of complemented it. And, and it just, it, very, it felt like it gave me everything I needed in a really easy to understand way. I didn't like I have to go through all these portals, all these extra clicks. It just felt like I could really conveniently and easily learn exactly what, the, and I, the, I felt like I was on, on the same, um, like the professors and I were on the same page with what to study. So the ones that were challenging were, you know, it was like a lecture video and then the homework didn't really feel like it linked up to that. And I couldn't find it in the textbook. And it's just very like, things were all over the place. And I just felt kind of lost. 
and sometimes I was lost in terms of actual material I was learning, but sometimes I was honestly just lost in trying to navigate on the online, like, okay, well, what's due again? And okay, wh what am I supposed to be reading? And which, which, which connects to what homework and what little link to what article is supposed to be the thing? And so it's just this feeling of just lost and kind of overwhelmed. I think that, you know, simple is better. And just kind of walking people's hands, not even through like material for lecture stuff, but also just, it's really easy to understand where I'm supposed to be at what time and what page and, you know, when things are due. And so I guess that's to me the things, you know, material is always going to be challenging and some material is going to be more challenging than others. And it's, you can do so much, I think, to help students out by making complicated things, not overly complicated by, by adding additional, like just navigating the online pages. You know, I think that that, that just makes things so much easier. And so that, that's, I guess, me, the big difference between, you know, good online courses and ones that maybe struggled was just, you know, understanding. I knew exactly what was expected of me and it was easy to get that information, you know. That's really great. Yeah, I, I heard a piece of advice from, from a professor who said that they learned more about structuring an online class. Uh, for the, the most they learned about structuring an online class was taking an online class, which I thought was really a <laughs> really great perspective. Um, Talitha, I would love to hear your perspective, your experience. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, my experience was pretty similar to Preston's. Um, I had actually uh, discovered what Course Hero is back in winter quarter right before COVID happened. Um, it was when I took my first major course um, for biology. Um, my lab partners and I um, would actually like get together once a week and we would work on our pre-labs and post-labs together, kind of brainstorm and like talk through each problem and just help each other. Um, and so um, she actually introduced me to Coursera because um, one time we were super stuck on, on a pre-lab and um, we had Googled some keywords from it just to see if there's anything out there that could help us. Um, and so Course Hero came up and we saw that there were all these like past students that had um, shared, you know, their documents. Um, but it wasn't like a here's the answer kind of thing. It was more of a um, understanding their thought process and just coming to our own conclusions that sort of thing, putting bits and pieces together from other documents and um, understanding the question as we like research it. So um, that's kind of how um, I got to know Coursera in the beginning. Um, and then I started to use it for um, my calculus classes, um, my following biology courses. And I guess one thing that I love so much about it is that um, I, I utilize the tutoring feature all the time, like every day. Um, so it kind of makes me feel more confident in asking questions because um, some, most of my classes are giant lecture halls or giant Zooms. So it's kind of intimidating to walk up to a professor after class and like ask them a question or even like go knock on their office door because you don't want to like, you don't want them to think that you zoned out during a part of their lecture and you know like hey sorry i wasn't paying attention like i know you covered this so um course here helps because i can just ask any question that i have and and get the help that i need um and you know it's it's super nice to see that there's um that 24 7 tutoring feature um so that's like my experience with it um and i know i'll still be using it for like the rest of my college career so um, I'm super excited that that feature exists. Oh, it's so great. Uh, it's so great to hear. And, and tell you that, I think one of the things that, that I, I think I get so excited about when I, when I hear kind of your studying process is you, you really seem to have like a communal approach. Like you talked about like your sorority where you, where you share kind of what classes you're in and, and you talk about study groups. I'd love to hear like what role community plays in your, in your study habits. It's a, it's, it plays a big role. Um, since high school, like, uh, my friends and I would just get together during lunch and we would um, like work on homework together um, during study hall. Like I, I felt more confident working in a group because um, I was learning from everyone. It's kind of like how I look at it is that like working with friends is basically hearing the lecture again, but in your language, if that makes sense. Um, cool. Like teachers use uh, big vocabulary and sometimes you know, I'm too shy to say, I don't know what that means. So um, working with my, my friends and classmates, it's like, hey, I don't get that. Like, and then they, they kind of 
um, explain it on on like our level, I guess. Um, so working in a community definitely um, is super important to me. Um, so um, just like having study groups or even if my friends aren't in the same class as me, um, going to the library together and just motivating each other to study um, was a big part in my um, life on campus. So um, now that everything's online, it's just um, not as easy to do that. So um, that's when that's when I kind of get up course here and I'm like, hey, I need help. <laughs> <That's> really <laughs> cool. Yeah, and I, I think what you mentioned about the language is so important. There's there's the language in class, and then there's also the language out of class. I was the first person yeah. from my uh, from my family to graduate college, and I didn't know what office hours were. The first time I heard about it was when I got into college. So I think there were some students who actually don't even know about it. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So one one thing I'm curious about. So both of you use the word stuck, and and I know that Genevieve talked about it a little bit as well. When you have a moment of, um, how do you distinguish between I'm so close, and if I just if I like keep going, I can I can figure it out versus I need help. Um, like how how do you like describe that experience of of being stuck and what it feels like for you? Um, I guess. Um... I could start off with answering this question if Preston um, doesn't <laughs> want to, but I... Um, you, yeah, sorry. I was actually <laughs> responding to a panelist. Alex, could you repeat that question real quick for me? Yeah, um, sure. So um, so the uh, question was like, how do you, when you're in a, in a stuck moment, how do you distinguish between like, I'm so close and I just need to reread or try it a little harder yeah. versus like, I genuinely need help right now, so. Um, Okay, maybe this is just because we live in a generation of instant gratification, like with everything. <laughs> but a lot of the time I'm just like, man, like why, like if I could like have a tutor, like walk me through something now, like that'd be like much more convenient than trying to like spend potentially hours like combing through the resources and I might not even get the answer at the end. So I've been in both where there's been times where like, you know, I've been stuck and I try and I try and I try and get more and more and more frustrated. And especially like, here's like a deadline and here's me. And as I get closer and closer and closer to the deadline, like, it's like, you know, I started this project at like six o'clock PM and it's due at 11. And I'm like, oh, I have plenty of time. Like it's a five hour period window. And it just gets like, oh no, no. You know what I mean? I think that so many students have been there where they're just like, there's this panic that sets in. It's just is like awful. So, I mean, I, that's why like, I, I, if I can have a resource or an ability to, to get unstuck quickly, why would I not take that? You know? And I think that, you know, in almost every field I can think of, you know, speed is the thing like now right like i'm in telemedicine because it allows doctors to get results to patients quicker and then amazon has prime and it's just like that's kind of like where things are going it feels like just all across the board and so to me it's just like you know something like coursera where not necessarily like it's like an answer but like you can walk you through a process instead of having to like focus on a couple different things or trying to figure out where to go it's a resource that's like immediate and tutors with coursera same thing you know and so when I'm stuck, that's kind of what I look for. It's this kind of balance between answering the unstuckness in a way that is deep and re re resonates with me and meaningful and I actually learn, but also it's quick. You know, it's also something that is like easy to navigate and easy to just, uh, grab. It's just like this low hanging fruit that's like, okay, boom, got it. I can take it. I can learn from it and it's useful, but it's also like easily obtained. Yeah. So that's kind of my feelings about I'm stuck now, especially towards the end of my schooling when I started using Coursero, having it more readily available meant so much to me. It, it was like this stress reliever <laughs> that's great um i have a thought about that but i'd, I'd love to hear what talitha thinks so yeah. so i don't step on our words yeah yeah so um i totally agree i feel like um how i can tell if i'm stuck is if i start to get a little frustrated um or if i keep googling you know questions pertaining to i guess whatever problem i'm stuck on and not finding any solutions um so i guess like um how i can really tell is when I'm you know writing a math problem for example and I just like keep working through the problem super fast and I'm like okay I know I'm almost there like so that's that's how I know that I'm not stuck I'm um, mm -hmm. kind of like how Preston said it's all about speed so mm -hmm. or if I'm writing a paper even and, and like the ideas are coming and they're all over the place but they're still there you know I could do something with it um, but it's definitely a frustration thing um, that's how I know I'm stuck especially if there's a deadline um so i feel like yeah. college is a oftentimes stressful experience anyways i mean on top of classes like 
I can't tell you how many college friends of mine are going through hard things in life. You know, they're trying to figure themselves out. They're trying to balance work and school. And stress is just really negative. Like, I think that especially as a society, we're just so much more aware of just like mental health and self-love and things like this. And so and in my mind, like any way that you can alleviate stress and like try to have less on that plate, like, why wouldn't you do that? And so that's kind of when you, when you talk about, you know, to leave kind of those things, it's like, that's kind of what I hear. That's how I feel at least too. It's just like, you know, if there's, if there's a way to do this just as good, that's less stressful, what, you know, that's, that's for sure what I'm going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't yeah. need more of this negativity in my life. Like, get that out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talitha, were you going to add something? Did I cut you off? I, I was going to say that, um, like, we're co- like how Preston said, we're college students. So we're also, like, figuring things out as we go. It's nothing like high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so if there's, like, a, an assignment and it's due at midnight, and I give myself a few hours thinking, oh yeah, like I could, I could get this done in a few hours. And I realize that I can't. And like, um, it's happened a few times where I've submitted an assignment late and um, it's just up to the professor, like if they're gonna accept it yeah. late or not. And it's like, uh, sorry, I, mis- I totally miscalculated how long it would take me. So that's mm-hmm. definitely another like factor that adds to the stress of being a student. Cause sometimes you don't know how long it'll take us to do something, so. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I think I, I really like, I, I feel like both of you kind of distinguish between challenge and, and stress. Like there's challenge, like, oh like I'm, I'm like, it's like working out, you know, I'm building the muscle mm-hmm. stress where it's like, I'm overwhelmed and, and I'm not, it's not productive at that point. Um, yeah, that's, that's really, uh, that's really great. Um, we're going to uh, hop into questions in a minute. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to, uh, to I see a few in there that we could talk about. Um, you know, one thing I'm interested in, and, and I think what, what has been so exciting connecting with both of you is that I feel like you're so committed to learning and self-improvement and all this great stuff. Um, you know, I, Genevieve touched a little bit about there are the students who want the explanations like the two of you do, and then there's students who are like, Googling for quick answers, <laughs> you know, they're just like, I, I need something. So I'm curious about what, like, so I, kind of a two part question. I'd love to hear, you know, you're both, you're, you're both college students. You, you both know other college students. I'd love to hear, what do you think leads students to those moments of just wanting an easy way out? And why did the two of you kind of resist that? Um, sure. I, you go for, yeah, oh, go, yeah. For it, go for it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Um, so the first thing that comes to my mind um, when I think of a student that wants um, the easy way out immediately is um, the deadline. Um, if you're five minutes away from a deadline and you know you don't manage your time well, you're like, oh my gosh, I need an answer right now. Um, so I guess like it's definitely like for me, it's it's um, managing my time so I don't get to that point. Um, so that way I can learn better. It's not you know stored in my short term learning. Uh, like as a pre-med student like I can't afford to um just like get the easy way out because everything every class that I take is is foundational and it builds off of each other so um yeah just like having an explanation helps a lot more than just a quick answer because it'll serve me better in the long run great I think that there's any number of reasons why students decide to take the easy way out sometimes it's like hey my class has nothing to do with my mate with what I want to do with my career I'm not interested in it, but I have to take it because that's what I have to do. And it's just like, I don't really feel like investing. It's not, and so that could be a motivator. It could be that, you know, maybe they just haven't learned good study habits throughout school in their high school and their you know, elementary school. And suddenly they're in a college setting and they're trying to like, sometimes maybe they're just genuinely lazy and taking college more of an experience. My point is regardless of what they're doing it, once it, I kind of view life as a series of lines to cross, right? And so I think that once you cross that line of trying to take an easy way out, trying to cut corners, trying to fill in the blank, it's so easy to do it again and again and again. So regardless of what brings students into doing that, I just think that it's kind of addicting once you're there. It's like once you, you know, got a really good answer and it was like really easy, like why wouldn't I do that again? And I think it's just really hard to stop. And so I think that, you know, just as a personal note, it's it's like the students that I think that haven't crossed that line and try to like work you know, don't take the easy way out, don't try to cut corners. They're the ones that seem to push all the way through. But it's like, I've seen people that the more they do it, the easier it gets for them to do. And so that's just kind of like an observation that I've made. And it's hard for me to kind of like generalize like why I think people do it, because I think there's any number of reasons. I mean, sometimes 
I've had students that are like on academic scholarship and become from really hard family situations with financial and they're having to slip me like, I'm not going to pass this class and it's going to like ruin my life because I don't have money and this is what I was depending on. So I need to, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of empathy towards students, honestly. And I know that's maybe, but it's just like, you know, everybody's lives are so complicated and it's just like, I always think that don't cross that line because like, if you can figure out how to push through it before you do, like, you're just going to, that's just a great life skill to pick up on, you know? So that's kind of, my two cents on that. Totally. And that both of those perspectives are really wonderful. I know when I taught, I, I had to reflect on, am I, am I creating an open enough environment where students yeah. feel comfortable coming to me when they're struggling? Um, we have about five minutes left and I'd love to get to some of these questions. So uh, Lisa Riviere uh, had a question for uh, the two of you. And she said, what are some features in, in on online platforms? Uh, are there any ideal features you would add to online platforms that you use for class or overall? So it could be like a LMS or, or Coursera, or are there any features that you think would be really helpful for you? Hmm. It's a good question. All right, I stuck you helpful for me. I'm not sure if that's something you can just offer, but like, you know, a lot of classes, you know, specifically in like the science side of things, when I was like, you know, I have a, I actually kept my biology, biology minor. TAs are awesome. Like TAs are an entire service that I think are kind of hard to replicate online. You know, like as a professor, you know, especially when you have a couple cohorts you're dealing with and stuff and pretty complicated things, having some TAs you can go through. And so maybe finding ways to integrate that, like integrate features where you can get like not just a robot, not just a video, because videos can't answer questions, not just a paper to read because that might not answer, my, but actually a person, like a human touch to a virtual experience, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that that would make it very enriching because then it, comp it complements this, you know, these, these, these endless resources that you can read on your own time by yourself with the ability to, you know, actually have that human touch when the, when the need arises. And so if you can find a way to do that, I know that's probably a huge ask and super complicated i think that that'd be a very enriching environment for a student to be in and honestly it connects you to them more probably as a professor or as a ta i think that'd be probably enriching for both of you in a big way <laughs> i just wanted to add that um i don't know if every school does this but some of my classes have piazza it's like a um q a um for students to like interact with each other in that class or the tas and the teachers so um, that like definitely helped as well. Like how um, Preston said, like um, it's not like a video or anything. It's like your actual question and, and they kind of help you out with that. So that that's definitely been super helpful with my math classes. Just a thought, I'm not, I'm not sure if a professor would ever want to have a student in their own home outside of virtually, but like having Zoom office hours where you can like just be at your desk, like be it out of the office or at home, something like that where that's the option. I don't think I've ever had, I don't think I've ever had a professor where I could actually just feel like comfortable like, say, could I, like, schedule a Zoom meeting with you? Mm -hmm. But that might be, you know, things like that would be a good idea. So, yeah, so that's just a thought. Also, i sorry if I cut you off, Talitha. I just had that thought. That's, good, yeah. that's definitely a good, a good point to bring up to Zoom office hours. Definitely help. Awesome. Um, Genevieve, I think this is a good question for you. Um, how is uh, Priya Venkatasan asked, how is Coursera different from LMS uh, or things that publishers offer? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, we're, we don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to answer this quickly. If this is of passionate interest to you, I super suggest coming to Coursera Office Hours at 2.30 because we can talk about this more. Um, but super, super quickly, our, our general feeling towards learning management systems is that they've been designed for the institution and not even for individual faculty, but for the system, the institutional system. And so we're coming at it kind of from a different angle altogether, which is how do we help students and educators almost like bottom up as opposed to top down in an LMS. And so there is some overlap, but our orientation, how we approach problems is really different from an LMS. So things like making resources available up from the whole world, not just from one school, that's something that not like a normal LMS system doesn't usually do. They're usually very walled off. And in our case, we're really trying to like have as much information as we can gather from as many people as care to share with us and have the right to share, we, we want to be that place instead. So it's, it's almost like a different philosophy between the uh, typical learning management system and what Coursera is trying to achieve. I know we have about a minute left, but there's one question I just want to touch on really quickly. Uh, Eric Simmering asked, do you worry that- I'm in the middle of typing out the response to that. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, let me, and Preston, please feel free, but uh, but uh, just to kind of quickly touch on it, do you worry that Coursera's convenience can be damaging? Uh, he talks about a medical doctor needing to make a, uh, a diagnosis under, uh, under pressure. Genevieve, uh, you could talk a little bit about that. The one thing that I was going to say is the way that I perceive it, and I, I, this Preston and, and Talitha, both of what you said reminded me a little bit of this. Um, I think when the convenience, the way that I see it is that it's trying to 
eliminate the time that's spent searching. Um, and I think that even as a teacher, there are times where I'm like on the ninth page, page of Google to try to find something that I, that I was looking for. And, and I think we're trying to spend the, the way that I put it is like less time searching and more time learning the material. Um, so that's, that's one piece. I don't know if that directly addresses your question. And, and I definitely love to talk more about this, but Genevieve, I don't know if you want to touch on this and then, then you could yeah. sign this off. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd love to. I, I met Eric yesterday and of course you're office hours. So great to see you again, Eric. Um, I think what I want to say is similar to what Preston said, stress is all around us. We are all learning how to cope with stress, especially now in pandemic times and racial and social justice crisis times and economic crisis times. Like we have never been in a more stressful situation, most likely for most of us. So I don't feel like it's important that students learn survival through stress in these specific moments where they're working on their homework. And like Preston said, the deadline is coming and coming and coming. Like if we can just help you learn effectively then, I would love to feel like that's what we're doing. And you're gonna learn how to cope with stress in all these other amazingly difficult situations life is going to put you through, because that's life. But where stress is not meaningful and it's not actually helping you, then I don't feel like we want, we want to, to artificially make it that difficult. And that's where that's I like combing through a zillion resources. If we can just help you find the right resource and actually learn then, that's just a better use of your time than like wasting the cycles on searching when you could be learning. Uh, I just want to throw in, like, looking at your question, like, I think that, like, if you look up stress in a dictionary, it might just be organic chemistry exam. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not sure that, yeah, you know, course hero is going to fix an organic stress from taking an OCHEM exam. <laughs> um, but, you know, things are, there's still aspects of school that are massively stressful, and I don't think that any amount of, like, easy resources are going to help with that. You know, passing an OCHEM exam or class in general is one of those things that is just part of the package, you know? <laughs> There's parts of like doing homework that might be easier, but you know, the study behind it, the understanding the material, I don't think there's any amount of resources that can make that the stress of that any easier mm -hmm. than, than, than maybe what you went through when you're going through school. You know, learning is learning. I would connect one more thing that Talitha said. I absolutely loved it when she said this because you're pre med, everything you are learning, the stakes are really high. You don't mm -hmm. want to skip something, you don't want to not have a stress coping mechanism because as a doctor in the world, you're going to face like high stakes situations every single day. So I, I really I really appreciated what you said, Talitha, about the importance of what you're really learning and the importance of like getting a strong foundation. And I, I just wanna make it super clear, like Coursera is trying to help students build that, not like get around that or skip that step. Great, I think uh, we're we are a couple minutes over. I'm so sorry for keeping everyone over. I wanted to briefly, first of all, thank you so, so much, Preston and Talitha. You are amazing. I'm so thankful to know you. I, and I'm just, uh, I can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, and I just wanna pass uh, everything to Genevieve real quick to, uh, to just kind of wrap us up. Yep, I'm gonna share my screen really quickly, folks, and then we'll get you into a break so that you can have an exciting rest of your afternoon. Um, I also wanted to add my thanks. Thanks to Talitha, Preston, and Alex. I totally love the panel. I learned a lot. I took a ton of notes. I was writing on post-its the whole time. So thank you so much for helping me empathize with you guys. I, I, I loved it. Um, and I also wanted to recommend another session coming up this afternoon. If you've enjoyed hearing from our students and hearing what they went through in our COVID-19 times, um, two of the researchers I introduced you to earlier, Rachel and Shireen, are presenting a wonderful um, set of primary research about what students have gone through in COVID-19, and they're also having an in-depth discussion with more students. So if this has been your cup of tea, that might also be your cup of tea. I think it's in track B at 315. Um, so let me close with a really, really important round of gratitude for everyone. I said this early on in my talk, I really am here to try to create an equitable, accessible educational system for all students. And I consider all of you educators as my partners in this mission. So thank you so much for spending a little time with us and our team this afternoon. Thank you for coming to the summit. Thank you for everything you're doing to help your students every day. I appreciate it deeply. And on behalf of my little daughters who may someday study with you, I appreciate it. <laughs> more. So thank you so much, team. I, I really appreciate it, everybody.